And hey, Christine and Laura, it's good to see you guys. Hey, thanks for joining me this morning. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I mean, like, it's Saturday. I want to paint. I want to paint. I love Saturday mornings because I get to um, paint and not feel guilty about it. Because you know what? I've got teenagers, they're all still sleeping. Some of them are even at college, so I don't even really, I'm assuming they're gonna sleep till about two. But um, it's just a really nice time in the week where I get to paint what I wanna paint. I don't have to worry about what other people want me to paint. It's, you know, this isn't about doing commissions, it's just about getting what I wanna get done, all right? So here's the thing about florals. Uh, I love painting florals and um, they're they're just they're just my jam. There's something I love to do, and I also love painting really loose and free, and almost have an abstract quality. I'm not super worried about um, the details. Here's the thing about flowers, they're so great. If you get a like for a flower, if you get a petal out of place, or or there's just you know like you can just play and that flower doesn't mind at all. It's not like if you're doing a portrait and you put the nose in the wrong place, everybody's like, whoa, that nose is in the wrong place. If you put like a petal or a leaf in a different place, nobody goes, whoa, you put that in the wrong place, right? So I, they're so forgiving and they're so fun and they're so freeing and that's why I usually love to paint florals on the weekend. Here's the, the next thing. Um, you know, in the spring and in the summer, we get to see flowers all the time. They're in our gardens, they're, uh, you know, they're just everywhere. And I think we get so used to seeing them, we forget um, that in the winter we don't get to see them. And so in the winter time, I paint a lot of florals, number one, because I miss it, and number two, because I think everybody else misses seeing their gardens as well. And so I get a lot of requests for uh, painting flowers and I sell a lot of commissions for floral paintings in the winter time. So this is one that I'm going to be um, putting into my January collection. So in January, I will be presenting a collection of five paintings that you guys will be able to see and have first access to. So I'm finishing up this one. All right, I'm going to finish this one up today and I'm going to kind of just start playing with it. Um, as in true form, I'm going to show you what my palette looks like, what I'm starting with. All right, so here's my palette. <laughs> All right, it's not, um, It's not beautiful, really. It, it actually is kind of interesting because I, I probably will be able to use some of these colors in the painting, but I'm really pretty much going to be starting out with some fresh new colors. So, again, I just love, really just love painting floral abstracts. All right, so this one, I'm just going to, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna play with the background, really. It's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing on this one. Um, a lot of people who followed me for a while and have watched my work and they, and they, um, they always comment on how they love, they love my backgrounds, right? So my backgrounds are almost, if you start watching other artists, my backgrounds are almost as important as the subject matter sometimes. And I just, I just love that. I just love that. I love backgrounds. They're so freeing. They're so fun. And so on this one, I'm going to I'm going to play with the background. So right now, the background. I'm just kind of analyzing the background. It's a little a little too busy still. Just a little bit. Just a tad bit too busy. So I'm going to be calming calming it down a little bit. Just a little. And then I'm probably going to be able to call this one finished. So I'm just setting up my palette, getting some colors onto my palette. So far, all I've put on my palette are new, just whites, right? Titan, buff, white, and just a really, really super affordable basic acrylic. This is like your, what you would go to Hobby Lobby and be able to purchase. So sometimes, Sometimes I just use really affordable paints. Now this one, the golden, ugh, it's probably $50 for this bottle. So like $3, $50. And it's just funny because 
over the years, I figured out where I can where I can use the affordable paints and where you really want to stay with some of the more quality paints. And um, you know, so so that's just a little fun fact. Little fun fact. Let's see here. I also want to add some more of those whites. I'm gonna add some more white. Here's another white that I'm gonna use. It's called a Titan Violet um, Pale, and it's another golden, and this is a really nice, 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 soft, pinky white. So I'm gonna add that in here. And let's go ahead and add some neutral gray, because I think that'll help. So gonna put on I'm gonna put on my apron I would change my outfit a little bit so let's see before I, I jump in and get started okay oh we have some artists here today hey Laura just curious do you use regular or distilled water in your Masterson's palette I'm <laughs> so I as you get to know me and how I paint I I used to use tap water. I just use what's straight out of the tap. I don't worry about those things. Basically, for those of you who um, who are artists, or even if you're not an artist, you know, we gotta remember we're painting with plastic. Acrylics is just a plastic, right? Um, it wasn't it I can't remember when it was invented, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it really became popular in the 70s, right? Just think about that. It's plastic. So you don't have to um, there's there's not like this magic formula to how to use your paints. It's about trial and error and history. You'll just start getting used to what works and what doesn't work. Um, I'm, I'm, this is me. I just don't want to overthink. I don't want to overthink. I just want to, I just want to paint and, um, yeah, distilled water or, or straight out of the tap. I just pull it straight out of the tap. Right. I think sometimes artists like to make it sound like, oh, you've got to use all these special products and you've got to, you know, you, you just have to. Here's the thing. You'll find out when you're painting and when you're working and the longer you've been creating, you'll find the things where you can, where you can, um, save some money and cut corners and it's it doesn't matter. And then you'll find the areas where you're like, nope, I really need to invest in better paints or you know, better products, right? But it's part of that trial and error process. I mean, I do like my golden paints. They, they have better opacity and they have better pigment load. And so I do use them a lot, but um, there are times where I will go to a more, more affordable brand or a more affordable brand will have better colors, right? I mean, they might just have some unique, fun colors. I am a pretty much straight out of the tube kind of girl. I do my mixing on my palette uh, or on my painting, not on my palette. So this I think is gonna be a really nice, uh, like green white that's going to add some value here so I'm going to pull that into right so just a little bit of the green so I'm just I'm just really tightening up my background more than my my subject matter right so
So when I'm working at this level, I'm starting to look at my background and there are just some really interesting things that happen when you create a really loose background and you're not worrying about anything while you're creating your background. Now I have some really nice um, color mixing that's happened and some really interesting shapes that happen. Like I have this shape here and I'm not really sure if I want to keep it or not. I'm going to have to make a decision on this kind of like really quickly, but I think it might be a little too distracting. I think I have to get rid of it, but I was really considering leaving it. 